Hey everyone, thanks for joining me for another devlog for Dolphin. Today is Saturday, May 1st, and we are kicking off Dolphin's 20th devlog. Not a particularly important milestone, but still a big one in my mind as I reflect over the past year and then some of the game's development. To celebrate, we're going to be changing gears and working on something long overdue for Dolphin, sound effects. It's frankly pretty shameful that I've put such an important part of this game on the back burner for so long, but we're going to fix it. This week I want to create and implement as many sounds as possible to kind of play catch up and allow me to then start creating sound effects as I introduce new features and just develop those features in a more complete and vertical fashion. My starting point here is effectively zero. Some of you may remember that I had a few simple sound effects in my mobile games Blink and Snow Pounce, and while those got the job done, they were hastily recorded and thrown in the game without any real care or iteration. Dolphin needs to be different, it needs to be immersive, and the sounds need to be satisfying. So just a few days ago, I worked through Blip Sound's free introductory course for using Reaper for sound design. It only took me a few hours, didn't cost me anything, and although I still have a long way to go, I feel far more confident taking on some of this real sound design work. I'll leave a link in the description. I really can't recommend this course enough for total beginners like me. Alright, so the question becomes where to start. To answer that, I've pretty much just opened up my Trello board and created a huge but probably incomplete list of sounds that I know I need to get caught up on. The plan is to work through these one by one throughout this week, and to kick things off we'll be creating the player's footsteps in the sand. Let's go for it. All right, quick check-in as we come up on 8.30 this morning, and I've actually made some pretty encouraging progress playing footstep sounds. As you can see, we are here in my player foot file. This is where we call show footprint from the perform step function. And this function is called by the animation track for when the player is running left, right, up, or down. Now previously, all we were doing here was showing a footprint where we spawn that little footprint texture into the world. But this also makes for a really great place to play a footstep sound. And as you can see here, in my show footprint function, I'm passing in the terrain type. So I can switch over that terrain type to decide whether we want to play a footstep sound for sand, grass, and shore. We'll jump right into the demo here, but I want to warn you up front that these are not going to sound great. I fully expect that over time, as I train my ear and get more comfortable with Reaper, that I will be able to improve the quality of these sound effects. But for now, I'm working under the assumption that something is better than nothing. And in fact, I'd really appreciate some constructive criticism down in the comments. So with that, we'll go ahead and start running here on the beach so you can hear the sound of the footstep in the sand. This is obviously a very simple sound, and I actually created this by moving my finger across my mouse pad on my desk. Kind of made a swishy sound that I was able to manipulate just a bit in Reaper. Again, not great, but I'm thinking better than nothing so far. I also created sound effects for walking in shallow water here on the shoreline and up in the grass. So we'll go ahead and move into the water. This sounds kind of gross, I think. This is probably going to need a lot of work, but we'll head up to the grass. Not too unlike the sand, but a little bit chunkier, a little bit less drawn out. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. I have to say after working on those few effects, I'm already excited to work on some sounds that don't have to be quite so realistic, like picking up something off the ground or initiating an interaction. But in any case, I have to learn how to make all these sounds and make them well. So I think I just need more practice. I know it was a short session this morning, but it was productive, and I think I'm going to take a break now to get my workout in and get the jump on some new homeowner type chores today, including mowing the lawn and starting our first real garden, which I'm actually super excited for. Looking forward to some much needed time outside. We'll catch up in a bit. Alright, back in the office here at 3 p.m. Chorin took quite a bit longer than expected, but the garden turned out beautifully. Really stoked about that, and I think I've probably got a couple hours of dev left in me before dinner tonight, after which I will probably give myself the night off. As I was pushing the lawnmower around out there, I was just thinking about all the stuff I implemented this morning, and I realized there were two small changes I could make that would have a very positive impact on many of the sounds that I create in the future. 
The first of these changes at kind of a more global level is to tag each individual audio stream player that I'm using to play these sounds as either sound effects or music. And what this will allow me to do in the future is create an options panel with individual volume sliders for both of those types of sounds, which will definitely be a nice touch. The next change is a bit more specific to each individual sound. Instead of playing one sound over and over and over again, like the footsteps in the sand, I think it'd be nice to have two to three small variations in that sound that play randomly, just so the player is not hearing the exact same thing constantly as they're exploring the beach. I can accomplish both of these improvements by making my own extension of audio stream player, probably with just a few lines of code. I'm gonna try and knock that out now, jump back into my list of sounds to create, and I'll catch up with y'all in a bit. So at the end of my last video, I mentioned that I had some changes in mind for my new office space, and many of you have probably noticed at this point that that happened in a pretty big way. My multi-monitor setup is gone in favor of one giant 4K display, which I find much easier to manage between my desktop PC that I use for gaming and game development, and my two work laptops, which was already annoying before I had to switch a bunch of cables between them. To go along with this new display, I have a new, much deeper desk to keep a healthy viewing distance, and that comes with a bonus of more space for notebooks and writing, a laptop on the side, and of course more plants, which I almost certainly don't need at this point. I'm about a week into using this setup for both productivity and entertainment, and I'm honestly really digging it. If you have questions about it, or maybe want to see some kind of setup video, let me know down in the comments. All right, quick update, we're back on our player foot node, and as you can see here, we now have three audio stream players, one for sand, one for grass, and one for shore. And this is because I created my own custom class to extend the base audio stream player. If we take a look at that, you can see it's just a few lines of code here. We have an enumeration for audio type for sound effect and music, just like I described. We select that with an export here, and we also have an export array for the audio files that we might want to randomly play. And you can see just a few lines here to randomly select an item from that array, set it as the stream for this particular audio stream, and then play it. So in action, we can go ahead and play here. And I do have three files hooked up for sand in particular, where the pitch is just a little bit different. So I'll go ahead and run around on the beach, and you can hear how that sounds. So a pretty small change from a code perspective, but overall I think it makes a pretty big difference in breaking up the monotony of just hearing a single sound play over and over and over as you're running around. I'm going to make this change for the other two types of footsteps that I've implemented so far, and probably just try to knock out the rest of the types of player footsteps before I call it a day. Welcome back to Sunday afternoon just after 1 p.m. here. Had an early start this morning, but not with development. I ended up working some more outside and then pretty much spent all of the day so far editing the footage that you just finished watching. I'm a little groggy and in need of a break, but I wanted to quickly catch you up on the plan here. First, I have all my footsteps completed with the most recent addition being for terrain flagged as wood, such as the interior and exterior of the research vessel and the fisherman's hut. I think that sounds pretty cool, so it's time to finally move on from footsteps and tackle the huge variety of sounds I have listed out in Trello. It'll take me forever if I stop to show you each one, so I'm just going to go heads down at some point later this afternoon and into next week to grind through this list. Hopefully at the end of the devlog I'll have a game much more full of interesting sound effects. All right, I'm back at the end of the week here with the final update of the devlog. And as is often the case, I didn't manage to get quite as much done as I'd hoped. Extra hours put into work this week sapped up a lot of my dev energy, and I still have a huge list of sound effects to create. That said, I think I've still made some progress worth showing here. Right off the bat, I've added a few new sound effects and made some tweaks to existing sounds that maybe didn't sound so good after the first pass. So let's have a listen. The first set of sounds I worked on this week were sounds to accompany the player's attacks, and as you know, there are currently two ways to attack in Dauphin. We can equip a melee weapon and swing it, which we will take a look at right now. And we can also press Q to cast a magical attack, and right now all we have is a placeholder water blast attack that will not be in the finished product, but I wanted to go ahead and see if I could get sounds hooked up to the casting system, so we'll go ahead and take a listen. 
<laughs> kind of just sounds like water spraying out of a faucet or something. Again, I didn't spend too much time on that because this attack is not going to be in the finished product. The sword swiping sound here, on the other hand, I thought was a pretty good first iteration. This was what you actually saw in the earlier clip in the devlog of me swiping my finger across my palm. Just recorded a few instances of that, picked a clean one, and kind of shaped it up to give this swiping sound. The final sound I worked on this week was the sound of one of the sand crabs becoming aggressive towards the player. Right now, once you enter their detection circle, they just start to chase you, but I wanted some extra feedback for the player to know that they're in an enhanced state of danger. So now the crabs will actually increase their speed, their particles will turn red, and they'll play a kind of aggressive crab sound. Obviously crabs aren't very vocal creatures, but I came up with kind of this scratchy, bubbly, clicky sound when you get close enough. So let's go ahead and listen. You can see there's actually kind of a heightened sense of urgency here as they speed up to chase you. Particles turn red. The sound probably needs some work, but overall I think it's a good first stab at it. Now, I've probably spent the most time this week in my audio stream player extension, which is just where I have some extra functionality for the sounds I'm playing in Dauphin. One of the most important changes I made this week was with regard to the way I'm randomizing the pitch of certain sounds. Previously, I was creating up to two or three copies of a sound with different pitches, and choosing those at random to play for any given sound. And obviously this was not a great approach as I was doubling or tripling the amount of sound files in my project. What I realized is that Godot's audio stream player allows me to do that programmatically. So I have a new function here called randomize pitch where I pass in a pitch variance and then at random choose if I want to lower or increase the pitch by that number. Next up, as I mentioned earlier in the devlog, I want to be able to adjust volume from within the game, and that's happening here in my adjust volume function. It only looks like a couple of lines, but this actually sent me down a pretty big rabbit hole to get this working. You'll notice that I am pulling the volume from an object here called preferences, and if we go ahead and follow that to the preferences class, you'll see that I'm managing a configuration file in which I store values for the sound volume and the music volume. I got the idea for all of this from a great tutorial from GD Quest, which I'll of course leave in the description. The controls for these configurations can be accessed in Dauphin's new pause menu, which you activate by pressing escape. This kind of pulls up a dark overlay over the screen and pauses all of the items or nodes in the tree. At this point, we can head to the options menu, which is very much a work in progress and see two sliders, one for music and one for sound effects. This is not actually easy to tell how this works without a constant sound playing. So we're gonna head into the fisherman's hut and listen to the music I composed for that a while ago and see how the music slider affects that. So here we are hanging out with the fisherman. We can hear the music playing. And at this point, if I pull up that menu again and adjust the slider, you should hear how that affects the volume of the fisherman's theme. And as you'd expect, when you quit the game and load back up, these values are saved right where you left them. Even though I didn't create as many sounds as I would have liked to this week, I think I still made great progress by sorting out the foundational code for the pause menu and player preferences. With those out of the way, I should have a clearer path to create more sound effects next week. As always, I want to give a huge shout out to my Garami supporters on Patreon. Cody Odin, Finnickfu Games, Mega Ombre, Vlad Sunny, James Kennedy, Jess Sargo, and those who wish to remain anonymous. If you don't know, Patreon's a great way to support the work I put into these devlogs beyond just a like and subscribe, and I've been posting a lot more of the code I write each week for Cherry and Garami supporters. As ever, monetary support is absolutely not necessary, but I'm certainly grateful for those of you who've shown your support in the months since I launched it. As always, I hope you enjoyed the devlogs, stay safe, and I'll see you in the next episode.